Okay. We live. We live. Oh, we're live. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Please write in the comments if you can hear me. If you uh, if you can see my my really uh, crazy haircut, <laughs> it's a big change from uh, from usual, right? Uh, but please let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me clearly? And uh, is everything sounding and looking good? Of course. Oh, hello, God. Wow, loads of you. Loads of you uh, writing comments already. I didn't expect so many people to join so fast, but uh, thank you. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bit, a little bit nervous. And uh, the reason why is because I haven't gone live in absolutely ages. You know, it's nearly been, nearly been about two years. So in the beginning, I might have a bit of trouble breathing. Uh, you know, I'm not not the most uh, not the most confident person when I have already 217 people watching me. <laughs> but um, we're all a nice big family here, and it's great to see you. So, um, hello, everybody. We have a few things to talk about today. Uh, this lesson is probably going to be, I don't know, about 20 to 30 minutes long, and uh, we're just going to be focusing on. A bit of pronunciation. I want you to ask me some questions as well. Okay, so I want you to start sending me in your questions now. Now, there's a lot of comments coming in already, and uh, we'll get to some of them in a second. Uh, but the first thing I need to say is, if you really want me to actually see your message, there is a super chat function. Uh, I think you have. To, I don't actually know how it works, but I think you might have to just do it some kind of donation or something. And uh, I. Honestly, I have no idea because I don't really go live on YouTube. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, uh, before we before while we wait for people to join, I thought I would just have a little talk about something that's just happened to me today. And it's uh, it's, it's quite an annoying situation uh, because I, I went downstairs uh, to go to the gym this morning and I don't drive to the gym. I walk to the gym. Lots of you know that I've been starting to uh, to exercise a bit more. I'm eating more. I don't know if you can see in my face that I, I I look a bit fuller. I'm not quite as skinny as I was maybe a month or so ago. Um, and on my way to the gym, I walked past my car, and I saw my car, and I looked at it and I thought, that's a bit strange. What's going on there? And there's a massive dent like a uh, a dent for those of you who don't know there's like a uh, a mark in my car as if something has 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 hit my car and we'd call that a dent well actually there's two dents and a massive red paint mark around it just just where it's parked okay and uh then i saw there was a note written in the it was it was placed in the windscreen wipers which is the things which uh you know on the car it's self-explanatory right and uh basically this note was from the postman and the postman i i have loads of bad luck with postman trust me this this, this always happens um <laughs> but this time with the postman it wasn't a late delivery or anything it was it was the fact that he had actually driven into my car uh, and left a massive dent in the side of my car so not only is he delivering packages but he's also breaking cars at the same time so it's absolutely amazing now i have to go and uh you know thanks mr postman for telling me that you you dented my car uh but now i have to go and pay to get it fixed so this time it's not me who's clumsy it's it's mr postman uh we don't know his name we'll just call him mr postman for now um if i do find out his name i'm going to get you all to uh to find his facebook page and, and start sending him evil messages <laughs> actually no that's that's probably not a good idea I might might end up going to prison for that. Um, okay, so I can see lots of you are sending in your questions. Let's just have a little look at what you guys have been saying. Uh, so we've had uh, hello from uh, Gabriel Conti. Uh, we've had hello from Ukraine, which is from Anna. Um, lots and lots of comments coming in. Hi from Dominica Republic from Ramon. Uh, sorry if I pronounce any of your names wrong, by the way. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying my best. Uh, it's been a long day today. Um, in fact, one more thing I need to tell you before we begin the lesson. Um, this is good listening practice anyway. Uh, I actually was supposed to be filming a YouTube video today for you, and it was supposed to go onto YouTube tomorrow. 
Unfortunately, uh, I filmed it once and didn't realize that the camera wasn't focused on me. And uh, so I deleted it and started again. This is after about an hour of, of filming. Uh, so I started filming it again. And unfortunately, this time, the camera ran out of battery and I was unable to, to, to finish filming. So this is about another 45 minutes after that. So I'd been trying to just create the video for about two hours. And I finally got to the point where I just realized I've had enough. I'm just going to go live. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. And I thought it would be also be a good way to, uh, to show you my, my new haircut. Um, please be nice because I'm still trying to get used to this. Um, it's very cold here. Very cold. I had lots, you, you saw before, I had very long hair and uh, it was warm, right? Having long hair. Now it's very cold here and uh, <laughs> uh, I'm still getting used to that. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's get to the, let's get to some, a few more comments actually, just before we do, we do the, the lesson that I have planned. Uh, someone said, where are you living? I live in Bristol, uh, which is in the Southwest of England. So London is, is Southeast England and Bristol is basically the other side. Um, so we're, we're about an hour, hour to an hour and a half away from each other. We kind of have the same accents, but the thing is in London, uh, you have many different accents. So you get um, a different accent in South London, a different accent in East London, West London. You have Cockney accents, all these different accents uh, which come out of different areas of London. Um, but the kind of generic general British I don't like to call it receive pronunciation anymore. Like I'm a, I'm a pronunciation teacher. I've been teaching pronunciation for a very, very long time. Um, and I've studied it extensively. And I don't really like using the word or the letters RP anymore. Uh, the reason why is because, well, it doesn't really exist that much anymore. Most of the time now, people have what we call modified RP. <clears throat> So modified RP is the old school, you know, RP English, the, the old way of, of how we would have always pronounced it if we went to, uh, you know, kind of a posh school or a school that taught good English. But we have our own kind of regional variations of it now. And this is why it's such a great time to be learning pronunciation, because we have all of these different accents and you can allow bits of your accent to come in to the British accent you're learning and you'll fit in a bit easier than you would have if, uh, if it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we are living in changing times. Uh, and, and it's a brilliant time to be learning English, learning pronunciation. Um, is it Gabriel or Gabriel? Uh, I'm not sure, but he says, what's the weather like in your city right now? Um, it's, it was now this is, this is typical England. <clears throat> It was sunny this morning. I walked to the gym and back and it was sunny. I got home, had a shower, got out of the shower and it was tipping down with rain. Do you remember that from one of my previous lessons? Tipping down. It was tipping down with rain. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was kind of strange because it was sunny about an hour before. Then it started tipping down. Now it's stopped and it's kind of just dark and miserable. And that's what I like to call British weather, dark and miserable. So there we go. Um, Ukba says, I think I pronounced your name right, Ukba. Um, all right, mate. <laughs> now, I was actually going to talk about this very briefly, this, this expression, um, because in one of my old lessons, uh, I taught this technique of, of saying hello in British English. I don't know if you remember, I taught about how to say... Um, all right, when you see people. And also, have you been up to much? Or what have you been up to? I'm sure lots of you who are here right now who've been following me for a long time know about this lesson. Uh, you remember it. Well, lots of people commented on, on one of these videos and said, how do we respond to this? Because I realized in the lesson, I didn't actually say how you respond to, have you been up to much? Or um, also, how do you respond to all right? Um, but the first thing I want to mention is the tone again. 
for all rights. Um, now it's a question, okay? So when we ask a question in English, we do need to show it with our intonation. We need to show how, uh, you know, what we're trying to say with our question. So I want you to listen, I'm going down and then I'm going up. All right, all right. And what that does is it makes it a question. If I just said, all right, that doesn't sound like a question. All right, finishing with that nice up, that makes it a question. So next time you try and greet people, okay, in, in English, in, in, in the UK, do try that because it does work. Um, and it's, it's just, a, like I said, it's a way of saying hello and also how are you at the same time. But for some people, it's just a way of saying, I know you're there. That's pretty, pretty much it. We don't really expect that much of a response. If I wanted a response from you, I would probably say, all right, how are you? I know that sounds really weird because I'm asking a question and then I'm asking another question, but that's just how English works. The whole all right thing, that's just, that's, that's just something we do. It's a way of saying hello, also how are you? It's up to you how you want to respond. Do you want to start a nice big conversation with them? Then respond to them and say, oh yeah, I'm good, thanks. How's your day been? Or you could just respond and say, all right. Okay, again, all right, going up. Uh, and they might respond to you. So just play around, try some different techniques. Um, Avon, thank you, missed you too. Um, let's see, let's see some more comments. Uh, lots of very, very broad comments. Let's get some more specific uh, questions from you guys. Um, oh, wow, we have Brendan from, uh, from Bradford, which is, I guess it's, it's, is it near Bristol? I don't think it's that near Bristol, but fair enough. <laughs> um, and uh, Yenny likes the new haircut. Thank you, Yenny. I'm glad somebody likes the haircuts. Um, Leonardo, uh, you, you, you said, what's the most spoken accent in the UK? It really does depend uh, which part of the UK we're talking about. So um, in the north, it's very, very different uh, to the south. But if we're talking about standard kind of southern accent, it would be, um, there'd be a variety. It really does depend where you are. But RP, or what I would like to call modern RP, um, is the most spoken nowadays because it's used in London, it's used in the South, it's used in the Deep South, uh, but with a few variations, okay? Um, Hakumi says, are you feeling under the weather? Um, Good use of something I taught in a lesson previously. No, I'm not feeling under the weather, actually. I'm a bit tired because I went to the gym this morning, um, but uh, I've been going to the gym every day. Like I've told you before, I'm trying to get stronger and bigger, and, and I, soon my voice will be much deeper because I'm going to be stronger. Uh, I don't think that will actually happen, so uh, just forget I did that. Arctic Monkeys album behind me. Glad you noticed. Anyone who's an Arctic Monkeys fan is uh, a friend of mine. Um, I actually just went to see them in September. I don't know if any of you knew about that, but I went to see them live in September. It's the best night of my life. Uh, let's see what else we've got saying. Have you ever taught British pronunciation to Russian speaking people? I would say most let's say about 65% of my students right now um, are Russians learning the British accent. It's crazy. Loads of them are taking my course right now and uh, very easy accent to help. Lots of confusion, but it's a very easy accent to help and to improve. So if you do need some help, remember I'm here, uh, any of you, or anyone from any country, really. Um, I've worked with probably almost every accent and, uh, and and language now. Uh, do I teach online only? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, right. I'm just gonna, gonna quickly read a few comments. And then um, I'm going to talk about the difference between S and Z. So like S and Z, very briefly, not, not for a long time, but I will talk about that in a second because Lots of people are having problems with that and have been commenting about that recently. Um, am I live in YouTube regularly? No, 
But if this goes really well, please tell me. And um, if you want me to keep doing it, maybe it will become a monthly thing. Ask ETJ monthly live. It could be quite cool, right? Um, right, let's have a little look then. So I keep saying I'm going to read the comments and then I forget. This is why going live with me is sometimes a bit crazy because I'll be talking about one thing and then five minutes later I'm talking about Brexit or something something completely different. I don't want to talk about Brexit today, if that's all right. <laughs> um, what's my favorite English word, says Cillan Terp. Um, don't have one. Let me think about that and by the, I'm going to write that down. By the end of the lesson, I'm going to tell you what's my favorite English word. I've written that down, okay? I won't let you down. Um, lots of people writing about the haircut right now, so um, thank you for that. Do I live alone, says Trang. No, I live with my girlfriend. Uh, we've been together for six years, so yes, we are living together. Um, yeah, so lots of people saying that they find it difficult. Um, Bielzy, I think, Fegor, says uh, it's hard for him to pronounce the Z sound, so we're going to talk about that soon. Um, uh, Paula, hello from Poland. Hello. I have lots of friends from Poland. Uh, lots of people from Poland live in Bristol and, uh, yeah, lovely people. And I just saw the name Kiki come up. That's the name of my cat. Uh, she's asleep right now, so I can't bring her here, but hello Kiki, who's not a cat. Um, hello from Korea says Ki Lee. Uh, what's your favorite Italian dish? Oh, oh, Luca. Um, What's my favorite Italian dish? <laughs> I just like, I don't know because like in the, U I haven't been to Italy, but in the UK, um, we probably have a different form of, of kind of Italian food. But I just like having a, like lots of, of meat, you know, on a table, like boards of meat and bread and just eating it. Um, but if we're talking about pasta, uh, then I... Uh, I don't know. Anything, really. Absolutely anything that's Italian is delicious. Um, questions, guys. Any pronunciation questions you have for me? So far, it's all just been questions about me. <laughs> um, is teaching my main job? Yes, it is. This, this right here is my full-time job, as well as teaching my students in my course and sending them WhatsApp messages um, to help them. Uh, could you tell me which one of these phonetic transcriptions is correct for the word girl? It's the second one, okay, Anu? So, g, uh, so the er uh sound is uh, the British form. So what we do is we create, we lift the tongue up to the middle of the mouth and open it in quite a relaxed way. Uh, in words like work, learn, so g, and then we have to finish with what we call a dark L. Now, a dark L is, I've talked about this in a few of my, my lessons before. It's not a L sound, it's a U sound. We create a very round shape with the mouth. So, girl, girl, girl. Okay. So, I hope that answers your question. Uh, it's, it's the second way that you wrote it there in your message. Uh, what's the pronunciation of niche? Says Saredas, Caredas, I'm not sure. Uh, niche. We finish with a sh, niche, niche. Now, some people do say niche, uh, but most people I know would pronounce it as niche. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Can I speak American English? Um, I'm not going to right now, but I can do a very good impression of Americans. Um, oh, good question. Sergio, are you considering giving pronunciation lessons with Arctic Monkeys lyrics? That is a good idea. And maybe I will do that in the future. Um, just the issue is, I don't know if everybody here likes Arctic Monkeys. So it might be a bit unfair. But one thing's for sure, I won't be doing it with like Taylor Swift, One Direction, none of that stuff. Uh, I'd probably um, I'd probably be headbutting the desk if I had to listen to that kind of music. So sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, Prasanna, I think is how I pronounce your name. Sorry again uh, if I pronounce your names wrong. What about often 
or often? Now, this question I am absolutely always asked, often or often. The other one is schedule or schedule, okay? Now, let me tell you the traditional British way of pronouncing these. Often, without the T, often. The other one, schedule. That's the traditional British way, okay? But nowadays, there's a mixture. Okay, there's a big mixture. You will hear the poshest person ever who lives in Chelsea in London who has a really, really posh accent. And they might probably, I mean, they could probably say schedule or neat. Uh, niche. <laughs> that was earlier. Or um, often. It really, it, what's happening is the fact that we are surrounded by American things in life. Um, some of the biggest businesses are American, especially media businesses, uh, TV. It's all American. Even I grew up on American stuff, like watching American. I used to watch Nickelodeon when I was a kid, right? My favorite show was Keenan and Kel. Um, Sabrina, the teenage witch, my sister used to make me watch that. Um, and because of that, we pick up little words and we start saying them this way, right? It's because of how we kind of grow up surrounded by these these sounds, okay? So sometimes we do pick up little things, uh, which we do, and schedule and often are one of those things, okay? So, um, yeah, that's how it works. Just looking through some more comments, and then I will talk about S and Z very briefly. Um, who won the book? Uh, the, I can't tell you who. I would like to keep them private, but I did respond to them in a comment in the video. So if you really are determined to find out who it was, uh, they are in the comments of that video and they've had a response from me saying, hello, you've won the book. Um, so yeah. <laughs> also, um, another question which I'm asked a lot, which somebody has just asked here, which is, I can't, ooh, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your name, Kabdul Kadir, Kabdul Kadir, Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Can and can't. I'm going to be very quick with this one. Can, ah, okay. Tongue down at the bottom of the mouth, near the bottom, the, the bottom teeth, at the bottom of the mouth, right up behind them, okay? Ah, ah. Now the R, we have to push the tongue back into the mouth, okay? And I want you to imagine you're at the dentist, okay? And you, they tell you to open wide, R, like that. That's the sound you're making. Can, can't. But I do need to tell you that in some parts of the UK, where I live in Bristol, in the southwest, people might say can't. It's not American. Yes, Americans do it, but that doesn't mean it is American. It's also a southwest thing and also a northern thing in the UK. In fact, it's only really a particular part of England that would pronounce it as are, can't, or past, or fast. But just remember to make that sound, the tongue needs to push back into the mouth a little bit. Open the mouth nice and wide. Are, can't. Try not to say, uh, well, let's just say, try not to pronounce the uh sound when you do that, because it could sound a lot worse. Um, right, let me see what else. Uh, 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 oh, can I explain? Explain. Oh, I've explained that earlier. Um, I've already explained this in videos before. So, so I'm getting lots of questions about things I've already talked about in previous videos. I'm just trying to make these things. Okay, here we go. Virginia. Bird. Beard. Bear. Er. Ear. Air. Okay. So. Uh, I've talked about that before. Work, learn, tongue in the middle of the mouth. Uh, okay. Ear, ear. So we're doing an E, B, uh, beer. Okay. So imagine the mouth going nice and wide for the E and then just kind of relaxing for the schwa sound. Uh, ear. Uh, diphthongs are quite difficult because they are two vowels together. Ear. Uh, it just takes lots of practice to get those ones right. And bear, okay? Air. Same thing again, but we're doing an eh. Air. Eh. Air. 
bear. Quite a difficult one because lots of you probably want to pronounce it with an er and say bear. Uh, because it's easier, it makes the word clearer. Uh, but if you become very good at the British accent, then those diphthongs will sound nice and clear when you do pronounce them. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Matthias has a very good question. How do I say what? Now, I like this word because it's very, very British. Okay because we have the o oh sound in it. Now, if you're going to learn any sound that makes you sound a lot more British, I want it to be the o oh sound, okay? In words like hot, not. The main thing to focus on here is the nice round shape of the mouth. Now, it would take me ages to teach you how to pronounce every sound in this lesson. Um, there are very, very detailed lessons in my course, which you can join below, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Um, there's a link below. But once you can pronounce this sound, what, it sounds really British. And I tell you one word which I always get my students to pronounce to test how British they sound. And that word is not. And it's also the word, uh, I like the word hot as well. And also, yes, what and lots. Those kinds of words, they really create a British sound. Okay, so you need to get that O oh sound nice and clear and it will make you sound more British. Really, really British sound, that one. Um, Chico Mobu 8 says, Irish accent. Uh, it sounds a little bit like a mixture of British and American. That's absolutely true. It does. It, I sometimes have heard Irish people speak and I have thought that they are American. It has happened before. So, um, yeah, it is kind of weird. But... Bear in mind, we have two different parts of Ireland. We have uh, the Northern Ireland, and we have the Republic of Ireland. And uh, the difference between those two is absolutely crazy as well. And uh, yeah, of course, I do have um, that. We do have the Scottish accent in the UK as well, which adds a bit more confusion for, for lots of people. Um, okay. What, uh, let me just see what else we've got how to pronounce okay um someone says uh, a video about intonation when i'm asking asking questions right see sometimes that bristolian accent does come in asking it's because i'm around it a lot and that's what will happen to you if you're around it a lot so ask it if you're if if you're asking questions i have made a video about intonation in questions you can find that in my channel already um let's have a little talk about the difference between S and Z. Then I will answer a few more questions and uh, then we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, I might have to go. <laughs> Sorry guys. So I want to talk about the difference between S and Z, but the first thing I want to do is actually teach you how to pronounce it correctly. So to pronounce the S sound, I'm sorry if this hurts your ears, if you're listening in headphones, I'm really sorry, this might hurt you a little bit, my, my voice, but s okay. What you need to do, look at my mouth, clench your teeth. Now to clench your teeth, that means to kind of bring them together, okay? Now I have slightly funny teeth, so um, my top teeth are a bit like rabbit teeth, right? I should be eating carrots all the time. Um, or, or I should get a sander to kind of shave them down, but um, that would be dangerous. <laughs> um, so, s s clench your teeth. And what you need to do is push your tongue, okay? Push your tongue kind of into the sharp edge of your teeth. So it's, it's going like up against these teeth. It's much easier with a diagram, which I have in my course, but I'll try and explain it to you now in the best way possible. Clench the teeth and push the tongue, okay, towards the back of the teeth. And what we're doing is we're blocking the air. So we're blocking any air from leaving the mouth, kind of, we're kind of like creating a block. And what we want to do is kind of allow the, allow the, the tongue to kind of take the, the sound with it, okay? So imagine the, the air we're blowing, it's making, it move along the tongue. S 
So I'm keeping my teeth together, my tongue are my tongue's being pushed forwards, and I'm letting the air ride along the tongue. S -s 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 okay, you can do that for ages. And all you have to do to pronounce the other one is voice it. So we create a sound in the throat. So the S sound is unvoiced, okay? And the Z sound is voiced. So now we have to use our vocal cords to create the sound. Z, tongue, same position, te te teeth, <laughs> still clenched. Z, okay? So try them together now. S and Z, S, Z, S. Z, 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 okay. One of them sounds like a snake. S, one of them sounds like um, a wasp. There you go. And it's a bit like with the th sound. We have an unvoiced and we have a voiced. Think, th, and we have the voiced. Those. So they're the same, but one's voiced, one's unvoiced. So. I just want to practice a few words with these actually, and uh, I just have them on my computer. So if I'm not, I'm not looking at the comments right now, just so you know. So I just want you to try a few words with me. Um, the first one I want to try is his and hiss. His and hiss. So H I S, okay, his, H I S, his, and hiss. Now, hiss is the sound a snake makes. Sss, that's what we call it, hiss. So I'll just type it here, actually. I don't know if this works. Remember, I don't go live very often, but it's his and hiss. There you go. I've posted it there so you can see it. His and hiss. Now, another example would be purse. So we're finishing with the aspiration, the s, purse, and purrs, okay? So, purse and purrs. Now, I need to explain what purr is, to purr, P-U-R-R. -R. A purr is a sound a cat makes. Now, my cat purrs when she's very, very relaxed. Now, I don't know if any of you know what this is yet. Maybe post... Um, in the comments, the uh, the difference uh, or, or what it is in your language, a purr. But when my cat's very relaxed and she's being stroked, she'll start going. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that very well, but that's what a purr is. So basically, when a cat's really relaxed, so we have purse, which is like uh, you know the the thing that. Ladies and men nowadays, you know, we, we get lots of men purses now as well. So purse, that's what people carry their like money in or their cards, purse and purrs. So for example, if I have a cat in my purse, I could say the cat purrs in my purse. Purrs in my purse. Now, the other thing I need to mention, just to, just to, explain in this lesson. When we pronounce the z sound at the end of a word, sometimes it won't sound extremely voiced, okay? It might actually sound a little bit relaxed, and it might sometimes to you sound like it's unvoiced. So for example, let me just um, think of another word, perfect. Use and use, use, use. So both of them are spelt U-S-E, use, use. One is Z and one is S, use and use. Now, sometimes when we pronounce the Z sound at the end of a word, it kind of becomes, yeah, quite relaxed and you might not notice it, but it's still really important that we at least pronounce a little bit of a voiced noise, okay? Sometimes voiced consonants can sound quite relaxed at the end of words. But we still do need to pronounce the voiced sound. Okay, so that's essentially how it works. Okay, so use, use. So for example, um, I thought of this example earlier when I was planning this lesson. I have a pen. 
Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm using my pen, using my pen, but my pen has run out of ink. It has no ink left. It doesn't work anymore. So now my pen, it's not much use. It's not much use. But if my pen was working, then I could say, okay, I will use my pen. So use with a z is a verb and use, if something is of use, it's a noun, okay? So that's how we can also tell the difference sometimes. But really, this is the big tip that I need to give you. And lots of my students on WhatsApp, they send me voice messages after they, you know, after they spent a few months on the course and they say to me, Elliot, you know, I'm following the course, um, but it's just sometimes so hard to remember everything with pronunciation. And this is the thing. I'm going to tell you kind of two things that you can do, which will really, really boost your learning. Okay. So the first thing is be creative. If you learn a new sound. So for example, we've just talked about use and use, okay? Z and s we've talked about. If you now go after this lesson, find some words which have the s, words which have the z and compare them, put them in sentences together and practice, but try and make those sentences about your life, about things you do every day or, or things you say every day, then it will make things better. Sorry, quick one. Uh, Myanmar, I think, said, uh, can I say the pen is useless? You can. Useless. Good one. Okay. So back to what I was saying, it, you know, you need to be creative because it actually helps you with training your muscles. If you start relating your learning to things that you do and talk about every day, your muscles will feel a lot more comfortable eventually and you'll start to remember things better. That's, that's just how it works, okay? It's muscle memory. Now, the other thing I need you to do is take your time, okay? You really do need to take your time when you're learning pronunciation. It's not a fast process. It's something which can be quite stressful sometimes. And you need to understand that, uh, I've mentioned this in a video before, it's training. I've told you that I've started going to the gym. Yes, I've started lifting weights. I've learned how to, you know, how to do the different exercises in the gym, like bench press, bicep curls, all of those things with the weights, right? I've learned how to do that from a, a professional, from a personal trainer. That's step number one, and that's with pronunciation. Step number one, learn how to pronounce the sounds, learn how to do the intonation, learn the basic rules. Step two, the big step, okay, what you need to do here is practice, okay? Because I've been learning, you know, how to do the exercises in the gym, but look at me. I'm not, you know, I'm not massive. I'm not huge. I haven't put on loads of muscle yet. And that's because I have other things to do. I need to do it over and over and over again. Repeat, repeat, repeat. As well as nutrition, you know, eating. But unfortunately, there's no nutrition. You can't, you know, eat a British pronunciation cheeseburger and then suddenly you sound British. Unfortunately, nutrition doesn't work with pronunciation. <laughs> I wish it did because I would love to speak with uh, like a, a, I don't know, just on demand speak with like a, 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 a German accent or something, you know, it would just be cool. But um, yeah, <laughs> so repeat. So cre creativity, repeat and be patient, okay? And you can eat cheeseburgers as well if you want to. That's, it's just not gonna help, okay? So let's just check um, a few messages now before we, we finish my voice. We all know from previous experiences that my voice slowly starts to die while we're, while we're doing these things. Um, but one more thing uh, I need to tell you is we've nearly reached 300,000 subscribers. And uh, I'd, I'd really just like to take this opportunity while there's you know 500 of you here right now to say thank you for subscribing to my channel. Um, 
it's been a really great experience having all of you together and, and for you know helping you all with your English for free. And um, the other great thing is that this course, uh, this YouTube channel has also given me the opportunity to reach out and, and meet people who you know, want to take things a step further, people who, and they finally, they join my course. Something just fell behind me. People who join my course um, I've, I've been able to meet them also because of them subscribing to my channel. They realize, oh, he's, he's a nice guy. He's, he seems like a pretty good teacher. I'll join his course. So I've met lots of people and it's been, honestly, if any of you are ever thinking about starting a YouTube channel, do it. Honestly, just don't look back and just do it. Don't be afraid of being embarrassed because it's the best decision I ever made. And, uh, I can't wait to reach 300,000. I have a special giveaway again when we reach 300,000. I will be giving my course lifetime access away for free to one person once we've reached 300,000 subscribers. Okay. So it's a really great opportunity um, for those of you who really want to join the course. Go and tell your friends, get them to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> and uh, then maybe we'll um, see you on the course soon. So let's just look at a few comments just before we uh, just before we finish. Let's see what you guys are saying. It's, it's been great. I'm sorry that my cat hasn't joined the stream today. She's really, really tired today. She's sleeping. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, have a little look at some comments. Okay, right, good one. Uh, hey, Lim would, has asked me, uh, I would like to know the difference between so... S O W and saw. So let's look at the two different sounds. O, so, okay, uh, o, o, <laughs> so, and saw. So we're doing a very round shape there. Or tongue is going up and back, up high and back, or, o, or. But don't let your tongue go so far back that you you swallow it. You just need to, you know, be very relaxed. So, so sore. I hope this answered your question. Please let me know if you need me to explain that any more. Um, that's also another word. More. Saw more. Same thing, okay? We're not pronouncing the R. And a very quick tip. We only pronounce the R when there is a vowel sound after it. In British English. I'm giving you so much information today. So a word like course, I tell this to all of my students when they join my course. The word course, we don't pronounce the R. So we don't say course like an American. We say course. Now the reason why is because after the R, okay, er, the next sound, and not letter, I mean sound, is a consonant sound. Because it's a consonant sound, we will not pronounce the R. So it becomes or we replace it with a vowel sound and that goes for lots and lots of words. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just quickly see, quickly see what else you guys are saying. I'm glad everyone's enjoying this live lesson. Happy to see me. Nirali's here. Um, Nirali was a member of my course and it's great to see her here again. She's uh, lovely, lovely, great, great learner, strong learner always improving. So uh, thanks for coming here, Nirali. Great to see you. Um, good to see some old faces who've been here for a while. Hey, Lim says, yeah, you heard me. Thank you. I'm glad I managed to answer your question how you wanted. Um, okay. Tony Antonio says, how can we remove our local accent when speaking English? I'm going to um, talk about this in one of my next YouTube videos about reducing your accent, just a few tips. So that will be next week. If you're looking forward to that, please hit the subscribe button. One more thing I need to say as well before I answer a few more questions. Um, if you didn't get the notification today that I'm live, uh, it might be a good idea to hit the, um, what do you call it? The bell? Yeah, the bell button. Uh, to get, It will give you notifications when I upload, when I'm live should be around there somewhere. I, do, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just the face and the voice. I, I don't know that much about uh, technology. I just make courses and I make YouTube videos and I'm good at that. That's about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the, the, the whole YouTube 
confusing stuff works. Um, let me just see what else we've got here. Um, ah, good one. Okay, so Chico says, Chico uh, says, how do you distinguish cars and cards? Very difficult one here. So for example, I could say there are two cars in my, let's say uh, there are two cars in uh, outside my house, two cars, C-A-R. But there are also two cards outside. Now, this is tricky because we have to create the d sound, cards. And it's very, very quick. It's a cluster. We have to hit the d before we get to the z. So it's cards, z, z. So the only way we distinguish it is uh, through a trained ear, really, and also context. So the other way you need to look at things is when I was a baby, I didn't know how to speak with a British accent. <laughs> um, I, I picked everything up while I was around it and learning from people around me, all the things happening around me, hearing it, right? And that's what's going to happen to you. With experience comes improvement. Okay, so just listen to people. But the other thing I have to say is listen to one thing at a time. Okay, so for example, if you're just focusing on one sound, stay with that one sound for a few weeks. Focus on it. And when you're listening to people, only think about that one sound. Okay, because if you start com complicating it with other sounds, your mind is going to turn into a a roller coaster and you won't know where you're going okay uh you'll be upside down and flying around everywhere and it will just get worse so one thing at a time that will help okay so for example if you're focusing on that d sound in a word like cards cards uh you just need to to really take a look at it and listen to it around you okay um Someone said, I guess we can listen to you 24-7. Uh, I'm not going to be here 24-7. I would lose my voice and my cat would would starve to death. Um, well, that's not true because my girlfriend will come home at some point, hopefully. <laughs> I hope. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. Let me just see what else people have to say. So many comments. Uh, you guys are really, really making this a pleasurable experience. I will definitely be doing this again, guys. Don't worry. Um, right. Uh, I can't spell or say Russian names, but it look, I just, I can't say it because it's in Russian writing, but he says, he or she <laughs> says, Hey Elliot, how's it going? Um, how to get rid of the Russian accent. Now I'm not just going to say this about Russian accent. I'm going to say this about every accent. I said, I'm going to make a video about this next week or soon, but very quick uh, thing is you need to identify what sounds are really, really native to your country. Now, an expert like me can tell you that, um, or you can try and discover it yourself or use information online. Then you need to start reducing them, okay? So just the major things firstly. So I'll give you a quick tip with Russians, um, because you asked very nicely, with Russians, the difference between a and e is a big one. So and and end. Uh, also v and w, so went and vent. Those kinds of things. They are the things that you should really be focusing on right now. Try and reduce them and, and work out when you're supposed to use which. And then start adding all the other things and, and, and noticing other things, okay? But for every accent, it's different. For example, Italians, big problem with i and e, so like hit and heat. Uh, same with Spanish. In fact, everyone has a problem with i and e, uh, even some natives. <laughs> so yeah. Um, let me just see. I'll do one, two, two more questions. Two more questions. And then I need to um, drink some some water. No, I'm I'm not just going to have a, you know alcohol. I'm just going to drink some water. Um, although there is a bottle of rum behind me, but that's another story for another day. Um, okay, let me just see some messages. A lot of them are about uh, my cat. So uh, 
The cat's the star of the show and she's not even here today. Next time, guys, I promise I will bring my cat to the lesson. I promise, okay? And she will, she'll be here, Kiki. She'll say hello. And um, yeah, she'll be happy to be here, I hope. She, she's not camera shy, you know. She loves a good photo. Send in your questions, guys. Two more questions I will answer. Um, I want to do a pronunciation question. So I'm just trying to find one here. Um, could you... Uh, God, so many questions. Okay. Rising tone tips. That's a good one from Marta. So rising tone. Um, intonation is a really tricky topic, but just to, just to quickly explain this, um, rising tone is generally used when we are showing that we have more to say. So for example, um, I have three cats. Uh, I don't, by the way, but just as an example, uh, I have two dogs. And so what we're doing is we're, we're kind of finishing by going up to show that we have more to say. So for example, um, some people like going shopping, shopping, going up. And then we would use a falling tone in the next sentence to show that we've finished speaking. So some people like going shopping, but others, they prefer to go swimming. Shopping, but others, they prefer to go swimming. So we're going up, and then we're finishing by going back down, climbing to the top of the mountain, and then we're going all the way back down. And that's how we would use a rising tone to show that we have more to say related to what we're talking about. The rising tone is very, very common. You'll see that I'm doing it now because everything I'm saying, saying the next thing I'm going to say is always related to it, to it, finish speaking. So down for finished speaking, okay? It's, it's, it, it's, it comes from experience, guys. Um, and you need some really extensive lessons on intonation to actually understand how it works and how to make people want to listen to you because everybody has their own, some, I mean, some languages don't have much intonation. But when you do, it's probably different to how we do it, okay? And, and you know, also with, with um, sarcasm, that's another story. OK, um, but also the rising tone or like a, an up tone on the last word uh, can be used with questions. OK, but only with yes, no questions. So when the answer is a yes or a no. So, for example, uh, a, a very, very good example would be, um, do you like cats? Cats. Do you like cats going up? Because the answer is yes or no. Done finished with the rising tone. Well, there are other th reasons and situations why we use it, but I don't have the time. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Right. So one more question and then we're done. One more. Uh, okay. TH sound. Okay. So I'll, I'll pronounce this one actually for Lynn. Uh, thank you for this question. Words with TH in the middle. Let's talk about this one. Bathroom. Bathroom. So the problem with TH sound when it's in the middle of a word is we have to quickly get our tongue in between our teeth. Okay, so bathroom. The best way to practice TH sound when it's in the middle of a word is just to train yourself to slowly push your tongue into the middle of your mouth. Okay, bath room bathroom and eventually you get faster and faster now sometimes quick tip this is a cheat uh, but you're allowed to cheat sometimes with pronunciation you can tap the back of your teeth when you're talking really fast okay that's the only time it's really going to work tap the back of your teeth so instead of saying the i could say the back the back of your teeth the back of your teeth. And I'm not completely pushing my tongue between my teeth. Reason why is because I don't have the time to get my tongue right in the middle of my teeth every time. So it's just a quick way of doing it. So it is a little cheat. So if you do find it difficult, you can do that, but I really don't want you to get into bad habits. 
and start doing things wrong. So um, best just to just to you know follow the general rules and practice getting your tongue between your teeth. Um, right, we've nearly. I said at the beginning of this it would only be thirty minutes. It's uh, it's been <laughs> whew, it's been fifty five minutes exactly as I speak. Um, right, one more. Muzzle and muscle from Tatiana. Last one. This is it. This is the last question. Muzzle, muscle. Because this is what we've been talking about today. Z and s. Muzzle, z, z. Muscle, s, s. Muscle, okay? So muzzle, what you put on a dog's face when they're aggressive. And muscle, muscle. I don't have any yet. Yet. <laughs> You, you're going to have to be watching me, uh, seeing my progress and uh, seeing if in a few months time I'm I'm huge. I don't think it's going to happen. OK. And uh, hi, Romy says, uh, my tongue is so lazy. So is mine. And I'm a pronunciation teacher. But, um, you know, sometimes if you just do some stretches with your tongue, do a bit of mouth exercise, um, eat some food, get it, get the muscles working, drink some water, hydrate and lubricate your mouth then um, I, I don't really think that works. I think you just need your tongue to, to, to be less lazy. So just, just, just work harder, really. Um, everybody's talking about their tongues now. Okay, so Kai Lee says, my tongue is so solid. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, how to do tongue exercises? Well, you can, okay. Um, I'll talk about that in another lesson as well. Um, but you can practice going between each vowel sound by moving your tongue between each vowel sound. Um, and that's a great way for training. That's included in my course as well, which allows me to kind of finish now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, if you do need my personal help and want to send voice messages to me for correction and learn everything about the British accent, everything you can possibly need to reduce your accent, then you can join my pronunciation course. It should be in the description box below. Um, and I'd love to meet some of you. I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't answer all of your questions today. You're, you're all a pleasure to teach. And um, perhaps, perhaps we'll, we'll do this again in a, in a few weeks. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. And have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is. And take care. Love you all. Bye.